All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Natty Roundtable. I got my guys here, James and Connor. We're going to be going over a topic today that I think a lot of people might not know about, including myself. I don't know as much as these two do, especially in terms of actual um, application of the actual term mini cut. So as I just mentioned, we're going to be going over mini cuts, their role, how to go about them, what they even are, and why you might implement something like this into your overall just diet structure and um, your overall protocols when it comes to your training as well as the diet itself because both of those things will change up a little bit as as I've come to find out a little bit here discussing with these fellows. So we're going to get into things here, just kind of, like I said, get over the whole just gist of what a mini cut is, how to go about it, and that sort of thing, and give you guys as much info as we can with that applicable info. So with um, my sort of background, like I was telling these guys, mini cut is not something that I usually kind of am, am normally getting into with a lot of my general population clients. It seems like it's just something more so for a competitor. Um, and I'm not, I'll let these guys do a little bit more of the talking there. But for me, when it comes to, when I hear the word mini cut, I kind of think of almost like a little bit of a recomp, essentially, um, a recomposition for someone who is maybe a little bit overweight or they're unhappy with the added amount of body fat that they do have. And they want to get that down, um, in a quick manner. So with that being said, I'll let, uh, I don't know, James, you want to start out here, kind of, or Connor, yeah. you want to start he's, out here? He's above uh, me on my screen. I know once this video comes out. Oh, you're okay, okay, you're okay. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so in, in a sense, I want to just kind of get, get people a feel for what a mini cut is. Um, I kind of have, like I said, my layman's view on it when it comes to competitor side of things. So I want to, I want to hear what you guys are, um, what you're doing with mini cuts, how to go about them and why you might implement that um, into your client's training. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think you're right in saying that a uh, mini cut is pretty much a like drastic and quick recomp. Because uh, when you think recomp, like the true term should probably be long term, higher calories, things like that, where you're like slowly just building muscle burning fat. The mini cut is so that I would probably classify it as two different categories. You've either got the mini cut that people do to get ready for the beach, where that's like your true. <laughs> suicide cut and that's not for performance that's not for any sort of goal other than to look good and then that way they are just running themselves like into the ground dropping calories throwing in cardio to get ready for x date it's pretty much a cut that they didn't plan well enough for is how i'll put it um and then for the competitor you have the mini cut where it's a planned in uh period of time to normally extend your bulking phase or your off season, because we know that there's a range of body fat where you perform best. And that's going to be different for each person, uh, myself included in that I run on the higher side. So my body fat likes to be a little bit higher than a lot of other competitors, uh, which is annoying in this social media. Age, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so for me, when I do a mini cut, I like to keep myself anywhere with the bottom end being 10% with the top end being 17. So I allow myself to go all the way up to 17% body fat when I'm bulking before I take time to cut back down again. And I know that because after 17%, I'm you know not really feeling as good. My performance isn't as good. Um, but so normally the range of people, I, I will extend it out. What you'll see is like 10 to 15 is what people normally say. Okay. And because we don't want to get too lean because then we start altering our performance, our fatigability, things like that. But we don't want to allow ourselves to get too high because at a certain point, the ratio of muscle gain to fat gain just starts leaning more towards fat and you're just kind of compounding the problem. So in a competitive sense, it's really a tool where you're going to increase cardio, decrease calories, things like that to decrease body fat for performance reasons in a short window. So like four weeks up to, I'd say 10 weeks being the longest, what I would consider a mini cut. Um, so that's just kind of the general of it. I don't know if you want to throw something else on that, Connor. Um, when it comes to, uh, if, if I ever do anything like that, it's kind of more general. Um, it's not necessarily for a performance standpoint anything like that it's kind of like uh how most people he was saying it talking about like the beach body thing um it's the majority of people who i have ever known who do something for it just they might be in their off season or they might be gaining a lot of weight right and then they're like yeah well i want to look a little bit better and then that's when they'll go into it um 
obviously uh, going kind of into macros, everything like that. If you really want to be nitty gritty and keep track of everything, that's just like anything else when you're going to see your best results, uh, especially, uh, you know, James was talking about some people might do it very, very quickly uh, without a plan. And, I mean, yeah, you're going to end up losing weight if you do it very, very quickly, even without a plan. But at the same time, uh, you know, if you do even think up of a little something and just kind of go slower, it's going to be healthier. It's going to be better for, I mean, really your performance like what we were just talking about. Um, I know some other people, uh, we were talking about powerlifting one day or, or, or wrestling and weight classes. Technically, you could consider like, oh, I want to get down a weight class as a mini cut. Uh, if okay. you really wanted to think about it. Um, whereas <laughs> some people just might drop a lot of water and start running and all this stuff. But at the same time, if you knew that however long beforehand, you, you know, you can plan it out. Um, and in which case your results will be, I'd say better in terms of for sure, you're going to feel better. Cause if you just do a cut, cut out of nowhere, you're going to feel like shit, uh, more than likely. Um, let's see here. Uh Oh, I'm back. Oh, okay. So, there you go. I, I muted it while I sneezed and then, uh, oh. I hit the- Button on the way back. So. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> that we lost it there. Everyone knows now. So you um, took my cover off. It, yeah, and then you got some people, like we were saying, who have a specific date that they want to lose this weight by. Um, for example, like a wedding. Uh, somebody might be like, oh, well, I had this wedding coming up. Even if they're not in the wedding, they're just a spectator. I got <laughs> this wedding so coming up. <laughs> yeah, I got That's this so wedding true. coming up. I want to be this weight by this time. I need to get there, and uh, a, a lot of times I feel like that's the most general mini cut that people might do is they have that date, whether it's the beach, whether it's a wedding, anything else, um, and then they don't look beyond that, so uh, they okay. severely want to lose the weight for that one thing, and then after that it's like, oh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know what I'd do now, yeah. and they I, just kind of... I have an interesting question. So from for someone like even me or a competitor where they're like, like if, like for me, for example, where they're not like super, they're not a competitor, super into it, but are like, if I'm going to do a mini cut, I want to maintain as much muscle as I can. Mm-hmm. And you're mentioning, especially without a plan, mm-hmm. what would be the way you would go about it? Um, sort of like the systemized um, way of going about it when someone's like, hey, I want to do this. But they are like sort of logical in the fact that, hey, I know if I go too much too soon, I'm going to lose some muscle mass in the process. Mm-hmm. How would you go about doing that for someone to maintain the most amount of muscle and just like feeling performance wise still at maybe not optimal, but close to optimal? How would you kind of go about that? I guess maybe protocol for someone who's, who's trying to do that if it was it was your client. If it was my client. Um, again, I would more or less uh, the easiest thing if you want performance to be the best if you want them to feel good is kind of look at their macros their maintenance that they're on right now and just drop that little bit or at least that's what something that i would do maybe Mm -hmm. drop uh a hundred you know 100 calories 150 calories if that starts getting them to lose weight little by little then hey Mm -hmm. Technically, and, we and, just started a mini cut, you know? Yeah, I was just saying, is there a way you kind of, like, go about that? Because obviously when you're doing it slow and steady, it's very easy to just kind of be like, oh, let's pull out, like, 100 calories. Like, what do you, mm-hmm. what do you most sort of, like, um, what do you find most satiating? What do you perform the best with in terms of carbs and fats? Like, we're going to kind of obviously have to pull it out from either one yeah. of those or one of those places. Like, is there, like, a number where, like, normally I would do this if someone had a long time and they were committed mm-hmm. to a long, drawn-out cut. But is there a number where, like, this is where I go to with them. Obviously, it's variable, but like, is there a percentage maybe that you go to to like cut calorie wise, like to to like get in and get out? Because that's the one thing I do know about mini cuts. What I've heard from most people, like um, people who kind of know what they're doing, um, and, and some roundtables I've listened to, it's funny roundtables you're listening to, um, they're trying to say like get in and get out. Like you should mm-hmm. be kind of drastic with it, and then you should get right back out of it. So you're not like in this like drastic dieting phase mm-hmm. for 
two weeks or whatever it might be. And that's the other thing I'm kind of wondering. How long would you say a mini cut is? And I know I'm kind of multiple questions here, but um, yeah. kind of like the way you'd maybe dr- cut calories and then like how long that would kind of last for someone. Mm-hmm. James, so I, I want to jump on, on this one. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, and I want to come back to one point real quick with yeah, the totally. time of it, Joe. Um, one of the things that the literature has shown, and I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, mm-hmm. is the amount of muscle loss in a short term with a drastic strategy is actually very, very minimal. The muscle oh, okay. loss that you see in competitors is when they get into those long, drawn-out competition ah, preps where okay. their body fat levels are so low that the, the body has to resort to protein catabolism to get the energy. So yep. if you're doing a mini cut, you already have a higher body fat anyway. So if okay. you're doing things right, you're not going to lose that much muscle in like a four to eight week span. Um, okay. So that's, that's why I push a little bit more of a drastic approach to it. So when I do it, I will increase the protein just a little bit to kind of offset mm-hmm. just in case, you know, help maintain muscle mass. Um, and it's not going to be a huge increase. And then bit, I'll pull, yeah. um, it, it'll be almost completely from carbs is where I pull the calories. Cause I okay. want that, I want to keep the fat so that their hormones, you know, stay nice and regulated. And what I'll do is condense the carbs to really only around their workout period. So okay. it'll be like one third before and then two thirds after. So one third before for performance, two thirds for recovery afterwards. And then that's really the only time they're getting true carb sources. The rest will be like trace carbs. Okay. Um, and number wise, I would, you know, I'm going to throw out a number and I know some people are going to come back and like, if, Oh, if I had a hundred pound competitor, yeah, I'm not going to pull a thousand <laughs> calories. On her. But so like, I'd say anywhere from like 500 to a thousand calories, which sounds crazy, but that is overall deficit, not just food deficit. So that's going to be from the cardio and everything. And I play like a nice little game depending on people's schedules and their requirements and things like that. How much cardio I add versus how much I rely on pulling food out. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's just stuff. what I wanted to throw. Up. Connor, you want me to clarify? He, I was going to say, uh, he was talking about pulling from carbs is one of the easiest ones you can do. And if you think about it, uh, because glycogen like glycogen storage there we go and everything like that that's going to be where you're holding onto that water weight as well so if you start pulling out of there they're going to start losing weight anyway from losing water weight too so i mean so that's one of those simple things that you can also take out because you can afford it and you're going to end up losing a little bit more for sure it. yeah for sure and let's let's say this for instance give you guys an example i'm i come to you as me I'm, I'm me, 150 pounds, pretty lean. And I'm like, guys, spring break. Uh, this is a couple months in advance right now. Spring breaks in a month, guys. I want to be peeled, like peeled to the bone. I'm doing a mini cut, coach. What do, what do you tell me? I'm me, <laughs> by the way. I'm already pretty lean. Mm-hmm. What do you tell me? What do you tell me? Uh, well, it depends on your goals. Uh, if I, you okay, were, let's, let's, let's hypothetical it. I got a, I got a show next fall that I'm looking at doing and I'm like, yeah, I really want to do that. I'm like talking it up. And then all of a sudden I come to you and I'm like, yeah, but I got spring break. That's going to be way sooner than I get the show's not till the fall coach. Like what, what am I, do, do I do the mini cut, go real hard, get shredded vascularity? Nope. In nope. my mind, in my mind, no. Um, and I say I like that because every week you're in a deficit, you're, you know, slowing progress. And if we have a set goal, you know that a, a prep nowadays is anywhere from like 16 to 20 weeks if you're a natural doing it the way that most do now. So fall's going to come pretty quickly because you've already got four to five months taken up where you're already in a deficit. So why are we going to add another one to two months just so that you can look better on spring break? When Joe, you already look fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what you gotta tell them, though. That's that's seriously what you gotta tell people sometimes. Where you're like, no, 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 you look good. Like, please don't. Like, I hate. No, no, no. I, I've I've had that conversation with so many people though. With, that's why when I laughed when you said the wedding thing, like somebody mm. who's not even in the wedding, you're like, oh, are you yeah. standing up? Are you a uh, bridesmaid? It's like, nope. I'm uh, no, I'm, not just, in it I'm just in attendance. <laughs> oh yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So, but I like that. So it would be more you'd you'd look at more of like the strategic standpoint and say, hey, like why not utilize this to continue putting on muscle in a surplus, and then yep. let's go about that cut when when we're uh, when we're at a 
logical point to. Um, but no, I like that. And as far as overall, though, guys, um, is this something that you implement a lot? Like, what would be like a scenario where this would be like the thing you'd go to, where like mini cuts, the thing I need. You know what I mean? Like, when I guess kind of would that be an implemented thing? And I know it depends on the situation a lot, but um, mm. when has been the times? Like, is this something you guys do a lot? Like, is this when have been the times you most commonly utilize this? When you have? Um, do you mean? For us personally or in general? Yeah, like you you as, uh, you as um, competitors yourself or um, clients themselves? I really don't do it. I mean, once I'm in an off-season, I want to be in an off-season. Because, sure. uh, for example, one thing that I've been doing is for the past few years now, every uh, bodybuilding season, I make longer and longer and longer. And therefore, by the end of it, I just want to – being an off season, uh, want to gain yes. weight and feel a lot better. That makes sense. So if I want to do that, you know, why would I go ahead and do this mini cut and you know lose however much weight? That Which makes sense. And, and granted, you know, I could do a mini cut to lose five pounds, you know, and that wouldn't be a lot or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I guess, uh, when it comes to it, I'm more. I guess you could say stubborn on that, which is once I'm in an off season, I want to stay in an off season until I know that I'm prepping for something else. It makes sense. It definitely yeah. makes sense. Even from just a psychological standpoint, I mean, from I've never even done a, a specific prep where I'm like grinding to the bone to that end mm. date. But even then, like I just know from the psychological standpoint, like you're ready, like you said, to, to totally shift phases, not only physically, mm. but mentally. And then mm -hmm. also, like, okay, like, yeah, you get three, four months into a bulk, and then you shift your mindset again. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, if you're looking at it from a psychological standpoint, which, as you guys know firsthand, yeah. bodybuilding naturally is a psychological sport, no questions asked. So I think that kind of psyche aspect as well, throwing that in there, like, you're going to, like, you're going to drastically reduce calories and increase your expenditure here for, like, a short amount of time probably does have an effect on you. So it's like, don't utilize that unless, unless needed. So, but James, yeah. when, when do you normally, maybe yourself or clients you've, you've had? Yeah. So I've done it with a couple clients, mainly mm -hmm. just when they're probably when their adherence to my nutritional recommendations wasn't great for an extended period of time. I see. So it's yes. like, all right, we still have a lot of time, but you're getting to the point where it's like, you need to clean this up a little bit. Okay. Um, yep. Personally, I've run two. Um, and they were both for very different reasons. So, and oh, they were both for the exact opposite reasons, the ones Perfect. I talked about. So the one I was going up to my own wedding, I was the heaviest oh. I'd ever been because I was in that bulking phase and I was 205 <laughs> pounds. You're like, and, maybe not ideal. <laughs> yeah. And 205 pound James isn't going to look good in a beach in Mexico for a week. So, <laughs> right. Like hopefully the tux fits. Yeah, no, seriously, I had to have it like remeasured like three times because my weight kept changing so much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I ran a mini cut to drop down a little bit. You know, I didn't go drastic like I need to be shredded for the beach, but I went from 205 to like 190, which was, you know, the respect. Oh, yeah, significant, so, but visually too, you definitely saw some results, I'm sure. Yeah, so I did that because, you know, I had that wedding, I needed to fit into my tux, and I needed to not look like a slob on the beach. That was like a psychological. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> And then the second was for the performance uh, aspect. And that was more, got back from the honeymoon and the wedding and everything. So obviously my food and training was crazy. Started getting back into my old routines, but things kept popping up where I wasn't able to hit everything 100%. My food wasn't 100%. My training wasn't 100%. So I was still progressing, but I was getting a little sloppy with stuff. And I got up to that 15% body fat. And I was just like, you know what? Like, I need to kind of reset things a little bit. So that's when mm -hmm. I used as a performance tool, okay. drop back to a better body composition to kind of push back through that weight range more efficiently and better. So that's okay. kind of where I am now. I went from, where was I when I started that last one? Probably 190. And again, I dropped around 10 pounds. So I went from 190 to 180, got down to 10 to 11% body fat. And now I'm building back up okay. with the goal of not like stopping this bulk until I prep again. Okay, for sure. So kind so of what again, I'm, no, go ahead, finish. I was finish just going to say, so again, I used it as that tool that I talked about to help prolong my off season. Okay, for sure. So it's kind of what I'm getting, what I'm understanding. And this has actually helped me a ton. It's like, if you're at a point where, like you're saying with your clients, maybe their adherence isn't the best, or maybe they're just 
Like they're simply, <laughs> they're eating a lot more. Maybe they're intuitively eating a lot and they're like, yeah, I'm really hungry all the time. It kind of almost is like a restructure, like you said, to, to kind of kickstart things, get you back to a better body fat where you're not like maybe a little bit too far over on that end of the spectrum and then get you feeling better, not only physically, but even performance wise too, I, I'm assuming can have an effect on that. If you're feeling, maybe you don't perform, you're getting to a point where you're like too big. It's like power lifters where they find too much body fat not going to help the cause if, you, if you're starting to throw off leverages and things like that. But um, no, that totally makes sense. And as far as that, um, that cut for the, the wedding, how like you said, you went from like 205 to 190. How, how long was that? Did you say? That one was either eight or 10 weeks. I forget okay, exactly. For sure. For sure. No, that's yeah. a really good example. Cause that's a perfect example of someone who's doing it for maybe like an outside factor, but you're doing it in a smart manner where you're not just like, I'm just going to stop eating and do cardio every day. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. I, that's why I specifically ask about that, but no, that's, that, that makes sense. But, um, yeah, no, you guys have anything else to add to that? Yeah. Well, I uh, yeah, I'll add on that. I, I think most people, when it comes to that mini cut, they, uh, they don't understand, uh, you can take time to do it kind mm -hmm. of thing. They think it's just, or, or they just remember all of a sudden that spring break is in two weeks <laughs> i need to lose 15 pounds or something like that planning required right yeah like, so make this I mean, yeah so i mean it's kind of like planning for a show or anything else like james said like what would you say uh, 10 12 weeks something like that is what you did yeah yeah something i mean that's 12 weeks is for some people how long they cut for a show because that's three months you know mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's plenty of time that you can take to do this, you know, prep for, in this case, it was prepping for a wedding, uh, or prepping for spring break, anything like that. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is also when it comes to mini cut is people just don't give themselves enough time because they think. It It'll quick. just happen like that. They don't understand how crappy they're going to feel if it happens like that. Um, and, you know, they just don't have the basic knowledge uh, of when, when it comes to that aspect, uh, I guess, is the last bit of my opinion on it. Yeah, yeah no. and I think, that's a, I think that's a good way to look at it, Connor. A, a mini cut really should be pretty much like the first two thirds of a competition cut. Mm -hmm. It should take you from like, does this guy even lift to like, oh, okay, like this is pretty good, but not into that stage where you're like, just look aggressive when you take your shirt off, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it should be right on that tipping point of like, this guy looks good to like, holy shit, that's gross mm -hmm. for the general population. Mm -hmm. What is, uh, there's like, I think Eric Helms uses, he's like, you're legally shredded and then you're, uh, <laughs> and then you're like competition shredded. <laughs> like, yeah. Or like, or if you go Chris Jones, the, the, uh, the full derogatory, the, the whole ready and then show mm -hmm. ready. So, yeah. Hey, I totally understand that. That makes sense though. It totally makes sense because when you get to that point, most people don't understand. Like, Oh, that's, that's kind of where I was getting at with this whole uh, spring break. Like I want to be vascular mm -hmm. and peeled. Like it's like, mm -hmm. like Connor said, you're going to feel like absolute shit on spring break. You might look really good, but you're going to feel like dog shit out there. Like, guys, I have to go take a nap. I can't, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> on top of you probably drinking more than you normally do, too. Like, yeah, let's drink in a depleted deficit state, which is a lot of times what those guys do after Olympia. And I'm just like, oh, my God, they're probably just getting so fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, enough with that. But uh, yeah, like I can't imagine what their system, their body is like. Why? Like, why are you doing yeah. this to us? Like, especially all the other compounds they're taking. But uh, but no, yeah. Anyways, so um, I think that was great, guys. I think, like I said, that gave me a lot of insight on things. Just kind of the basis of it, how I would even go go about implementing one if I if I was going to now. But um, I think that's very. It's a very interesting kind of just mechanism in general of how each of us would go about it and any coach in general. But um, I think that was a great overview. I think that gives a lot of good insight. And uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to add to things? Yeah, James? If, if there's one point that I can use to kind of summarize my, you know, thoughts on it, uh, this is actually paraphrasing from Alberto Nunez. He said, the body fat that you perform best at isn't necessarily the body fat you look best at. And you kind of need to split those two things, you know? Accept you gotta, it. You ha yeah, you have to accept <laughs> yeah. you're going to put on weight when you put on muscle because that's just how things happen. And if you're in the off season, don't worry about your aesthetics because you know that you're always going to be able to get back to that. So don't be so eager to pull the trigger on a mini cut and then destroy or slow down all the progress that you've been making.
So be comfortable in a little bit heavy body fat. I totally can attest to that firsthand. My my like ten pounds heavier is where I feel the best, and it's like getting there's a a biatch, but uh, hey, you gotta eat, Joe. Suck it up, right? You're gonna feel better when you lift. Yeah. Feel that uh, those leverages feel better. But yeah, no, Connor, you got anything to wrap it up with, man? I think, All good. I perfect. Think perfect. It, yeah. I think I think that's it, guys. I think that was perfect. Like I said, leave some comments below. Anyone has any questions, any comments, anything you'd like to see in the future? We're definitely always looking for topics, but we'll keep them coming regardless. So let me know if you guys have any questions, guys. Thank you for watching. If you're still watching, and for James, Connor, myself, see you guys in the next one.